Hey everybody, it's Joe. I'm back here at Giga Texas. This is a special day. As you've just seen, uh, Tesla has announced new Model Y standard and it's going to be built here at Giga Texas. And I got a chance to see one a little earlier than uh, most and kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like, uh, some of the features, some of the design choices. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about manufacturing and uh, some more information about uh, who is this vehicle designed to appeal to and what are Tesla's hopes for this uh, vehicle. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the imagery, some of the pictures, uh, both outside and inside of the Model Y, and let's get a little bit more familiar with the new Standard Edition. This is the bottom of the Model Y line. Above this is the Premium, which is the long range rear wheel drive and all wheel drive variants. Above that is the Performance, and then there's the Model Y Long version, which is over in China. Some of the main differences that you notice right off the bat, the front bumper has been simplified. There is no light bar. The lights for the headlights are integrated with the turn signals, 18 inch wheels and wheel covers. And as we continue to the back, we'll note that the uh, rear bumper is actually a little bit different. The hatch extends into that black portion of the bumper itself. The hatch also is a kind of one piece design and it doesn't have the uh, uh, spoiler cap that the regular Model Y has. The rear glass is of a different shape, very similar to the original Model Y and really a lot of, a lot of other visible differences. Now, if we go to the body in white, which is the structure of the vehicle, and here's one at Giga Texas, we can see what some of the detail differences are. Now, with the Model Y a standard, uh, it does continue to have the rear casting, just like the Model Y and the steel floor, so it does not have a structural pack. The front hood is steel rather than aluminum, and that rear hatch is one piece and steel as well. It does have the opening for a glass roof, and it does have a glass roof, but it's a different design from the regular Model Y, and the interior headliner covers it over, so you do not have that lighting effect when you are inside. So how does the standard model compare to the premium model? Here's a couple of comparison images from about the same angles. You can definitely tell the difference in the front of these two vehicles and the rear on these vehicles, especially with that glow underneath the taillights. Uh, and also, if you look closely, you can discern the difference between the rear hatch. From the side view, other than the extra light on the front bumper, I think most people might uh, not really notice much of a difference. A carryover feature from the premium Model Y to the standard Model Y is the front bumper camera. And I think this is pretty much the standard practice for Tesla and full self-driving now. The side view mirrors are manual as far as folding, but they still have electric motors to do the tilt and pan in and out of the actual glass mirror itself. Opening up the steel front lid shows more differences. On the underside, that rubber ring that is used to seal the front tub is not there. Also on either side of the front tub itself, there is no liner underneath the fenders as you can tell. The front tub, it's also not really a plastic one. It's more of a fibrous molded material. And inside there is no drain plug. It does have the toe eyelet here uh, in case you do need to be a toe uh, the other nice feature that is carried over is the washer fluid refill reservoir is on the front next to the bumper for easy access. And here's a detailed look at the rear of the car, that one piece all steel hatch and also the rounded glass that is very reminiscent of the original Model Y. Taking a look at the rear taillights, can see that it's simplified. It does not have that underglow treatment, uh, but it does have electric uh, power to raise and lower the hatch. Here's a good comparison of the premium Model Y showing that two-piece spoiler, the squared off glass, that under uh, tail light uh, afterglow, and the squared off rear hatch opening. And moving to the top of the Model Y standard, we can tell that the material is glass, but it is a different kind of glass, different laminate and different structure to be cheaper than the premium Model Y, but it keeps that same look and it prevents the Tesla having to paint the metal and it keeps that original uh, 
kind of structure of the vehicle. Now on the inside, you have this one piece roof liner and it's pretty simple and it covers that entire glass, which is kind of ironic that you have glass, but you're not able to see out of it. But if you were to look up inside, this is what it would look like. Moving to the interior, you can tell that it has this cloth insert onto the doors. It's matched on the dashboard and also within the seat inserts. As we get in closer to the footwell, I uh, want to look at that yachting center console on the right, the manual lever for the tilt and telescoping of the steering wheel, and the return of that turn signal stock on the steering wheel itself. And here's a great view of that uh, cloth insert into the seats and the yachting uh, center console. The chargers for the phones are still present, but it has a rubberized material on them. And sadly, there are no ambient lights on the dashboard or on the door panels. Looking at the dynamic screen, it looks pretty similar, if not uh, identical to what you would see in any Model Y. So not a lot of changes here. This is the charging screen and it looks pretty standard. A couple of detail items. Uh, first, the battery in the Model Y standard is about 18% smaller than the long range rear wheel drive. That puts it at about a 300 mile range at 100% charge. At 80%, you get about 235 miles. And in addition to that, I noticed on the top of the screen that there is a home link button. That is very nice. It's something I wish the Cybertruck would have. As with all Teslas, the Model Y standard does have the ability to have full self-driving and we'll get the updates and continue to improve over time. The locks, lights, display, schedule, and safety pages on the main menu uh, don't really appear to be any different and have all the same functionalities that you would expect in any Model Y. On the service page, it does show the tire pressures, and that's great news because there was some speculation that TPMS might be omitted on the Model Y standard. Uh, so as you can tell, they are indicated. Now, whether or not this is the electronic sensors in each of the wheels for TPMS, or if it's an ITPMS, which uses the acceleration of the uh, tires and the anti-lock brakes to determine the pressure, not really sure, but at least you can monitor your tire pressures. And finally, the last pages, software navigation, trips, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and audio appear to have the same functionality as in all Model Ys. The last thing I did notice is that in reverse, the rear camera view has kind of this circular mat around the display. This is very different than what I've seen in other Teslas, and I'm not sure exactly why this one appears this way. Now moving to the rear of the vehicle, one thing I noticed is that the glass on the doors are single pane, unlike the premium Model Y, which is double pane. In the rear, the uh, overall seating is the same as a regular Model Y. You can see the cloth inserts into the seats. Of course, that uh, one piece uh, liner for the roof. And the other big difference is the center console no longer has the uh, display and it has manual vents does have USB-C for charging, which is nice. And if you look up towards the front, this is kind of what that view would be like. How this would work with the RoboTaxi fleet, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe we'll just uh, have people using their phone and the app to control RoboTaxi if this vehicle is within the fleet. I think that that would be a great use of this vehicle uh, if that, that is what Tesla would like to do. So let's move to the rear of the car and take a look at the uh, trunk area. Having the power liftgate is a very nice feature that is a carryover from the uh, premium Model Y. You can tell that the rear hatch and the cubby holes behind each of the rear wheels is pretty much the same. So the same amount of cargo space as you would expect. The rear seats uh, do fold forward manually. We have the uh, cubby hole underneath where you can have more storage underneath the uh, floor which does lay flat which is very nice and uh, cup holders in that uh, middle seat armrest that folds down and of course it does have that uh, button for the power lift gate just like uh, all the other model y's which is a nice carry over and i think a lot of people would appreciate that now who is this vehicle meant for i think it's for gen z millennials younger couples people that have a young family uh, they want to have the extra space but they don't don't want the uh, extra expense and they're really not uh, concerned about uh, losing some of the features like the rear screen and 
having uh, that yachting uh, center console in the front. Uh, as far as utility, uh, this has pretty much every bit of that utility that you would expect with the Model Y. A large rear seat that does have the split uh, fold-down capability uh, that would help with uh, uh, groceries or maybe if you had uh, child seats, uh, that kind of thing. I think that would work out well. And probably having the cloth seat inserts might be uh, kind of a, a nicer feature, easier to keep clean perhaps. Uh, but uh, you know, again, I think maybe this might appeal to some uh, people that uh, are put off by all the technology. Although I would say that this uh, vehicle retains most of the technology that you would expect. Uh, it's just things like the manual folding mirrors, uh, the manual tilt and telescoping wheel, and uh, a few other uh, smaller features that are omitted. Otherwise, it uh, retains much of the Model Y. And of course, the center screen controls most functions of the uh, vehicle, just like any other Tesla. Now, Tesla's overall strategy here is to use design for manufacturability. The existing lines, the capital expenditures that have already been made, use parts such as bumpers or interiors that can be easily swapped out with the existing lines and processes. And also, as far as the timelines for this release, the uh, changing of the EV tax credit that affected the rollout of this vehicle. Uh, but I'm also understanding that, that there were also some technical issues, maybe suppliers um, and just uncertainty with what's going on with the overall environment that uh, caused it to be delayed about three more months. As far as the ability to produce this vehicle, uh, within the next couple of weeks, we should see the production lines uh, starting to really push out these vehicles here at Giga Texas. I believe that we will see at uh, Fremont as well. And probably sometime in November, Giga Berlin will begin making this variant as well. As far as Shanghai, I'm not really sure if uh, that will happen, at least uh, not in the short term. I think what Tesla wants to do is kind of get a feel for the reception of this vehicle and and how well it is doing before they make that decision. Uh, but ultimately, we're going to be seeing these vehicles in larger numbers very soon. So what is it like to drive? I got a chance to take it out onto the highway and also drive around Giga Texas in a variety of different uh, situations in traffic. And it performed exactly like a regular Model Y performed. And that is exactly what uh, I would have expected. And I think that's uh, you know a great sign that uh, they produced a vehicle that potentially is a lower cost uh, and maybe appeal to a wider audience. Uh, and it still performed uh, exceptionally well. The big question, of course, is going to be, can Tesla bring that price low enough to entice uh, people that maybe have been sitting on the fence, uh, maybe interested in EVs or having the ability of having autonomous driving, uh, don't really need all of the other features that uh, come with uh, the premium Model Ys. Uh, and uh, we'll have to see. I mean, uh, Tesla has put a lot of work into this product. They've been trying to use their existing uh, production lines and the capital expenditures that are already there, uh, trying to use a high margin vehicle like the uh, Model Y with uh, a much higher sales volume than they uh, experienced with the long range uh, rear wheel drive Cybertruck which uh, has uh, hopefully taught uh, lessons for Tesla that they're applying into the Model Y. Uh, I think it's a great vehicle. Uh, we just have to see how the uh, uh, public views this and uh, what the uh, orders look like in the uh, coming uh, few days and weeks. And I'm hoping the best. So there you have it, a look at the new Model Y Standard Edition here at Giga Texas. And uh, it's got a lot of interesting features. And of course, Tesla is counting on this vehicle to do really well. And we're gonna see how that does now that the announcement has happened and people get a chance to start looking at it and talking about it and uh, going on the design studio and maybe placing an order as well. Uh, you know, I know that the people here at Giga Texas have worked really hard to ensure that uh, this launch was gonna go well. And uh, hopefully we're gonna see that with uh, production beginning uh, fairly soon. 
and I'll be able to show you that when we see them coming out of the factory uh, in the next week or two over at the outbound lot. I just want to say thank you again for Tesla for having me out here and getting a chance to look at the Model Y Standard Edition a little bit earlier than most and to try to give you a little bit more information uh, about them and probably some uh, information that you won't get anywhere else. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what we were able to talk about here today and explore the new Model Y Standard Edition.